give us your sense of not just of where you see the sanctions as a tool of changing the strategic calculus, which at the end of the day is a part of this, uh, but also uh, give us a sense from your expertise of the other way, of course, in which Iran is very much under siege, which is through uh, cyber attacks, and how we think that might change uh, the decision making there. Great. Well, th thank you very much. You know, it, it's a debate, so let's start the debate. Um, I disagree with Roxanne. I mean, I think the Iranians are deeply fearful of sanctions, and they're deeply fearful of oil sanctions, and we're looking at a projected decline of 50% by the summer in the amount of oil that Iran is selling from about 2.2 million barrels to about a million barrels. The rest of the oil they sell in these ships that are turning off transponders, they're selling to the Chinese, and I'll tell you, the best you should bet the future of sanctions on Chinese oil traders because there is an opportunity to leverage their greed, not just punish it, because they have the Iranians over a barrel and they're squeezing 20, 30 percent discounts on every barrel. So even the oil that Iran is selling, it's selling at a significant discount. So the Iranians have deep concerns about oil market sanctions. Roxanne's right, they are very concerned about central bank sanctions, financial sanctions, sanctions against SWIFT, the electronic transfer system. They are feeling the pain. And that is why they came to Istanbul and Baghdad and Moscow. They did not come because they enjoyed discussions. They came because they are suffering. So the question is on sanctions, are we doing enough? And my view is on the sanctions dial, from zero to 10, we're at six. And we gotta go to 10. And if you've ever seen Spinal Tap, we, this one should go to 11. And we are a long way from 11. And I think Max is exactly right. It's absolutely criminal that we started in December of 2011 implementing serious sanctions. We've done pinpoint sanctions, targeted sanctions, incremental sanctions, and this is across all administrations, Republicans and Democrats. And finally in December, the US Congress dragged the administration kicking and screaming into oil market sanctions, and they finally turned <coughs> the corner from sanctions into economic warfare. And that's where we're at. We're now starting to embark on the, on the path of economic warfare. We've got to intensify this. The notion that we've got to create confidence-building measures with the Iranian regime is nonsense. There's no confidence. They hate us, and we hate them. And that isn't going to change in three months. It's not going to change in 30 months. So here's the alternative, fear-inducing measures. We have to create enough fear that Ali Khamenei believes, ultimately, that he has a fundamental choice. He can have a bomb, or he can have his regime, but he can't have both. And right now, he doesn't have that fear. He thinks he can have both, which is why he's stringing us along. Roxanne is also, I don't think she adopts this view, she's representing the views of Tehran, but the regime is wrong. They don't have an explicit right to domestic enrichment under the NPT. The NPT is silent on that issue. And in fact, of the 33 nations that have nuclear energy, only 11 actually have domestic enrichment. So they're entitled to the fuel cycle, they're entitled to nuclear fuel, but they can get that from abroad if they comply with the NPT, and they are a long way from comp complying with the NPT. So this notion that somehow we should give them upfront domestic enrichment, the carrot that they most want, and we should, we should relinquish our biggest stick, oil market and central bank sanctions, immediately defies logic and negotiating strategy that I'm sure all of you learned when you were four. And in fact, I'd rather send four-year-olds to negotiate with the Iranian regime than, than some of the folks that are negotiating because they understand brinkmanship, they understand intensifying and escalating demands, and they're willing to walk away, and they're willing to actually sometimes ask for the impossible. I think that the goal of sanctions today is to intensify them. It is our only hope of avoiding a nuke, and it's our only hope of avoiding war, and the time has got to start now. And I'll just quickly segue to, to uh, the cyber issue. Look again, I mean, cyber is an interesting part of a comprehensive strategy. Sanctions themselves are not a silver bullet. Cyber attacks are not a silver bullet. They are silver shrapnel. And silver shrapnel can wound this regime, can do serious damage to this regime. But no instrument of statecraft, no instrument of power is going to work in isolation. They have to work comprehensively. We have to be doing everything possible. We have very little time. And the one thing we cannot do is go to a negotiation and concede right away and give up our most important sticks. Thank you.